find the centroid of the shaded region in the graph below. So we have a triangle that goes from negative 2 up to 2, negative 2 on the x-axis up to 2 on the y-axis. Then we have a circle that goes from 2 on the y-axis down to 2 on the x-axis. The region is already drawn for you, so we need to get an understanding about the, the graph of this. The way we're going to do that is to cut it into two different parts. Part A will be the line, part B will be the, the circle, the part of the circle. Part A is a line that goes from negative 2, 0 up to 0, 2. We can quickly get the equation of that line. What's the slope? The rise is 2 and the run is 2. So the slope is 1. What's the y-intercept? It's going to be 2. It's where it intersects the y-axis. So that's B. We have M is 1 and B is 2. Y equals MX plus B will be Y equals X plus 2. We have the equation of the line. Now let's move to this quarter circle. What's the radius of this circle? The full circle would, you know, it has a radius of 2. And um, the center is the origin. A circle centered at the origin with a radius of 2 has equation x squared plus y squared equals 4. Well, we need to solve this for y. So we subtract the x squared over and take the square root. And we'll do the positive square root. We only want this, though, from 0 to 2. If we go from negative 2 to 2, we get the other part of the circle. So we want this line from negative 2 to 0. We want this quarter circle from two, 0 to 2. Okay, And remember now, we need an upper and a lower function. In the formulas, there's a f of x is the upper function, and g of x is a lower function. So what we're going to do is, in the, in the graph, we break it into two parts where we have an upper function and the lower function happens to nicely be the x-axis. And then we change our upper function and then the lower function is the x-axis again. So think about it as like a piecewise function. Your upper function, f, is in two different parts. The f function for negative 2 to 0 is the line. And from 0 to 2, it's the part of the quarter circle. It's a piecewise function. But the lower for both is just 0, y equals 0. And remember, the formulas become simplified because g is now 0. It zeroes out. So we now have a good understanding of the graph of the region. We're ready now to go into the formulas and figure out um, how to calculate the three main integrals. It's m sub y, m sub x, and m. The moment about the y-axis, the moment about the x-axis, and the mass. First up, the moment about the y-axis. We have the general formula, where this x times f minus g. And we're going to plug in our f and our g in two separate parts. From negative 2 to 0, the f is the line, x plus 2. But from 0 to 2, the f is the square root. Both of them have a g of 0, thankfully, so things simplify. We're subtracting 0. We take the x times the x plus 2 to get x squared plus 2x. We take the x times the root just to get that expression. And we don't have to worry about the 0. The one integral is from negative 2 to 0. The other integral is from 0 to 2. Now we go find the antiderivative. This one will be straightforward. It will just be power rule in reverse. This one's going to require u substitution. Let u be 4 minus x squared. du is minus 2x dx. Negative 1 half of du is going to take the place of x dx. x dx is going to be replaced by negative 1 half of du. So we'll have negative 1 half of du, and then the, the 4 minus x squared to the root will be just u to the root, a u underneath a root, and that's u to the half. Go find the antiderivative. That's u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds and cancel the 2's. When we cancel the 2's, we see that we end, sorry about that. Uh, we see that we end up with negative 1 third u to the 3 halves. All of this is sort of side work to help us figure out what the antiderivative 
of our second integral is. We can just use power rule in reverse for our first integral. x cubed over 3 plus 2 times x squared over 2, the 2's cancel. And then we have this negative 1 third u raised to the 3 halves power, and that's from 0 to 2. So we put the 0 in, and we get 0. Be careful. When you put the negative 2 in, it's, it's to the cube. Taking negative 2 cubed, you get a negative 8. Okay, so that's negative 8 thirds. And taking negative 2 squared, you get a positive 4. But don't forget, though, this is upper minus lower, and so we have to deal with that. On the other side, we put the 2 in, and we get 0, because 4 minus 4 would be 0. And then when we put the 0 in, we get 4, and that's to the 3 halves power. Don't forget about the negative 1 third as well. So you be careful. As long as you're careful, everything's okay. Um, we combine these together as uh, negative 8 thirds and 12 thirds to give you a grand total of positive 4 thirds, but then there's this negative here. Um, 4 to the 3 halves, that's 8 because it's 2 squared. I'm sorry, 2 cubed. But don't forget there's this negative from the chain, um, from the, um, chain rule in reverse kind of and then um, the negative and the negative give you a positive. We have a positive 8 thirds from this part, a positive 4 thirds from this part, but with the negative on it, makes it a negative 4 thirds. So this is a negative 4 thirds from all of this, and then a positive 4 thirds from the second part, a positive 8 thirds, all together gives you a positive 4 thirds times rho. So the moment about the y-axis is 4 rho over 3. Great. Now we move to the moment about the x-axis. We have the formula. And we replace f of x by the two parts of our function. From minus 2 to 0, that's an x plus 2. But from 0 to 2, that's a root. We square, and then we subtract. But of course, g of x has given us nothing. So we just square these guys. What do you get when you square x plus 2? You get x squared plus 4x plus 4. What do you get when you square a square root? They undo each other, and you just get what's underneath. And so now we're going to find the antiderivative here, just using power rule in reverse. x cubed over 3, 4x squared over 2 becomes 2x squared, and then 4x. Here we'll have a, a 4x and a minus x cubed over 3. But remember, there are different limits here. The first one is from negative 2 to 0, and the second one is from 0 to 2. Keep the row over 2 constant outside. Plug the 0 in, you get 0. Plug the negative 2 in, be careful. You get, once again, that negative 8 thirds, positive 8, and then you get a negative 8. Don't forget this upper limit minus lower limit there. We put a 2 in, and we get 8 minus 8 thirds. Put a 0 in, we get a 0. So what are we left with? Well, these 8's cancel, and a negative, negative 8 thirds is positive 8 thirds. Over here, we have a negative 8 thirds. So those guys cancel. You just end up with 8 rho over 2, or 4 rho. That is the moment about the x-axis. Finally, let's go get the mass. we am doing it on the same slide here. We have the formula for the mass. But remember, it's in separate parts. You know, we actually don't have to integrate. These are very recognizable shapes. And so if we could find the area of the, of the region, we multiply by density, and that's how we get mass. And these are very recognizable shapes. We have a triangle, and we have a quarter circle. So if we can get the area of the triangle and the area of the quarter circle, we'll have the total area to multiply by rho. So what about the area of the triangle? We're talking about 1 half the base times the height. What's the base? It's going to be 2. What's the height? It's going to also be 2. So we have 1 half the base times the height, or 1 half of 2 times 2. That's just a 2. How about the circle? It would be pi r squared, but you take a quarter of it. We only have a quarter of the circle. So it would be 4 pi, because the radius is 2. 
But we take a fourth of it, so we just get pi. And so 2 plus pi times the, the uh, density, rho, is our mass. Let's call it rho times pi plus 2, or pi plus 2 times rho. We have, our, we have our mass, we have our moment about the x-axis, and we have our moment about the y-axis. We're ready to go now and do the third step, which is take these three quantities and plug them into the formula. X bar is the moment about the y divided by the mass. Y bar is the moment about the x divided by the mass. So to get x bar, we take 4 rho over 3 and divide it by this pi plus 2 times rho. The rows cancel. What happens then, after canceling the rows, well, the 3 can end up being down here with the pi plus 2. So the x coordinate of the center of mass is 4 over 3 times the quantity of pi plus 2, all that's underneath the 4. Well, how about y bar? For y bar, the y coordinate of the center of mass, we take the moment about the x axis and divide by m. So we take 4 rho and divide by the mass and cancel the rho density constant and just get 4 over pi plus 2. You can drop the parentheses, that's not necessary, but we have it. This is the, this is the x and y coordinate of the center of mass, and we can look at uh, a picture of it. So you can see it. Uh, I went on the calculator, got that this is about a quarter, and this is about three quarters. And so I went and graphed that. And this guy here is your center of mass when the constant, when the density is constant throughout the plate. Okay, great.